Hel Helicopters are one of the most dangerous modes of transport on the planet. Copter crashing into the Atlantic Ocean, narrowly missing crowds of beachgoers, some of them are built for complex military and rescue operations. But in poor weather, even the most advanced helicopters can be grounded foreign. So how, so how do pilots land them in rough conditions and what happens if the engine fails? Welcome to TechBuy. World helicopters are designed with the most advanced aviation technology they're capable of handling complex operations and crazy maneuvers. Okay, okay, okay. But, they're hard but they're harder to fly than airplanes, and maneuvering them in bad weather over tough terrain can be extremely challenging. Let's look, Let's look at two extreme situations starting with landing on ships in rough seas. This can be particularly challenging because ships aren't just moving forward. They're rocking from side to side. And then there's heavy wind and the air awake from the ship's superstructure. To consider once a pilot is confident that he's within the ship, helicopter operating limits a device called the Bear Trap comes into play. This device was created by the Royal Canadian Navy in the late 1950s to early 60s and different versions of it are still used today. Here's how it works. The pilot lowers a probe to the ship, then the flight deck crew attach it to a winch below the deck through the center of the bear trap. The cable tension is increased, and the helicopter starts to synchronize with the ship like a little dance. The pilot then starts to decrease power. As the cable tension increases, and when the helicopter is low enough, the winch pulls the main probe into the bear trap to secure it, there are newer versions of this like Curtis Wright's advanced handling technology called Assist that don't risk ship crew falling overboard in stormy weather. The deck lock system is another alternative and it uses a specially designed steel grid in the middle of the flight deck when a pilot lands on it. A locking harpoon clamps down and secures the helicopter to the deck but in 2017 the Chinese came out with technology so Advanced, it could literally land a helicopter automatically to keep it simple. It uses GPS navigation to get the helicopter closer to the ship. Then, laser sensors adjust the position of the helicopter to the ship with an error range of just a few inches, and it lands automatically and safely on board. Flying over mountains is beautiful, but sudden changes in weather can quickly turn this stream into a nightmare. Landing at high altitudes and bad weather is challenging and requires a highly skilled pilot and a special high-altitude helicopter. Pilots usually identify elephant footprints which are safe spots for them to land in an emergency, but there are fewer of these on a mountain. Cliff edges are particularly challenging and sometimes landing is impossible because of unstable rocks and high wind. And if the mountain is covered in snow, there's a chance of causing an avalanche. Let's get over the top, over the top, when landing is impossible during a rescue operation. Pilots hover as low as possible, tip the chopper at an angle, and... So get over the top! Over the top! Woo! And the rescue crew get to work and help people climb in a team scrambling out to get those rescuers. The higher you go, the trickier it gets. And besides, insane wind speed, the density of air becomes a problem when the air density is low. Helicopter blades can't produce enough lift to take off or sustain a flight. Most high-altitude helicopters can safely fly as high as 7,620 meters, about 25,000 feet. But there have been two instances where pilots have pushed these limits. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that like button and subscribe to. Explained in 2005, a French fighter pilot named Didier Del Salle attempted something no one had dared to try before because the risk of crashing is astronomical. After getting Eurocopter to agree to his idea, he tested his theory by flying their chopper to 8,991 meters. This was nearly 2,000 meters above its maximum operating altitude and 150 meters higher than Everest. Then to extend the flight time, he lowered the weight of it by getting rid of the extra stuff like passenger seats. And after scouting the mountain for days, he made his attempt, but it was a lot tougher than he expected. One side of the mountain had a powerful downdraft of wind, which pushed the helicopter backwards. And on the other side, there was an updraft so strong it made controlling the ascent a huge challenge. 
Didier finally managed to touch down on a tiny area at the peak of Mount Everest for 3 minutes and 50 seconds. Another insane record was set by Fred North in South Africa in March 2002, but this was for the highest altitude in a helicopter without a touchdown. After months of preparation, installing a more powerful engine and fitting in oxygen equipment, Fred pushed the chopper to 12 954 meters. That's 42 500 feet. That's a little more than one and a half times the height of Mount Everest. But there was a massive scare on the way when the engine shut down and had to be restarted. So what happens with complete engine failure? Surprisingly, they don't fall like a rock through the sky when the engine stops producing power to rotate the main blades and the tail blades. The pilot has to activate the auto rotation system. As the helicopter enters auto rotation, it starts to descend the upflowing air from the descent, keeps the main rotor system turning and stores energy and right before landing. The pilot uses this energy to lower the speed of the descent and ensures a smooth touchdown now for malfunctions at sea. The pilot's procedure is different if helicopters can't land on deck. Option one is to refuel and land on shore, if it's not too far away. But if there's a complete engine failure at sea pilots have to land as safely as possible in the water again using auto rotation pilots and crew must escape the sinking vehicle using their helicopter underwater egress training. This training is intense, and it teaches pilots and crew how to keep calm and think underwater. Thank you first. They train in a shallow water egress trainer. They are strapped to a seat and flipped upside down and learn to escape through a window. Okay. And when they're ready, they put this training to the test in daylight and nighttime scenarios in the dumper. There are, however, unfortunate occasions where helicopters have met with horrific accidents. Honolulu, this is near the USS Arizona Memorial there at Pearl Harbor. In fact, helicopters have a crash rate of 9. 84 per 100 000, 000, 000 hours. Meaning for every hour in the air, helicopters crash approximately 35% more often than the average aircraft. But with aviation technology constantly evolving and with pilot training intensifying, this statistic can drop significantly lower. Have you ever been in a helicopter? What was it like? Tell us about it in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to explain. When it comes to helicopters, mechanical failures are a pilot's worst nightmare. These complex machines are made of thousands of parts, all of which need to work in perfect harmony. A single malfunctioning component can lead to catastrophic consequences. Imagine you're flying at 10,000 feet and suddenly the main rotor gearbox fails. This crucial part transfers power from the engine to the main rotor blades. Without it, the helicopter loses its ability to stay airborne. Pilots are trained to handle these situations, but the margin for error is razor thin. In 2019, a pilot in New York experienced a gearbox failure while flying over the city. With quick thinking and exceptional skill, he managed to perform an emergency landing in the Hudson River, saving all passengers on board. This incident highlights the importance of rigorous training and the ability to stay calm under pressure. But not all stories have a happy ending. In 2018, a sightseeing helicopter in the Grand Canyon suffered a mechanical failure that led to a tragic crash. Investigations revealed that a faulty fuel line was to blame. This incident prompted a series of safety checks and regulations to prevent such occurrences in the future. Routine maintenance is crucial for preventing mechanical failures. Helicopters undergo regular inspections, where engineers meticulously check every component from the engine to the tail rotor. Advanced diagnostic tools are used to identify potential issues before they become life-threatening problems. However, even with the best maintenance practices, mechanical failures can still happen. This is why pilots and crew undergo extensive training to handle emergencies. Simulators replicate various failure scenarios, allowing pilots to practice their response in a controlled environment. In the end, the key to surviving a mechanical failure is preparation. Pilots must trust their training, stay calm, and execute emergency procedures with precision. It's a high-stakes game where every second counts, and the outcome often depends on the pilot's ability to react swiftly and effectively. Have you ever wondered what it takes to become a helicopter pilot? Or perhaps you're curious about other extreme situations in aviation? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to Explained for more in-depth videos on fascinating topics. While mechanical failures are a significant concern, pilot errors are another critical factor that can lead to catastrophic outcomes. Despite rigorous training and stringent regulations, human error remains a persistent challenge in aviation. 
Imagine a scenario where a pilot misjudges the weather conditions and attempts to fly through a storm. Visibility drops, and the helicopter is battered by strong winds and heavy rain. In such situations, even experienced pilots can make mistakes that escalate into dangerous situations. In 2020, a helicopter crash in Los Angeles was attributed to pilot error. The pilot, flying in poor visibility conditions, became disoriented and lost control of the aircraft. The tragic accident claimed the lives of all passengers on board, including a well-known public figure. This incident underscores the importance of adhering to safety protocols and recognizing one's limitations. Communication errors are another common issue. Misunderstandings between pilots and air traffic controllers can lead to incorrect flight paths or missed instructions. In 2017, a communication breakdown resulted in a near-miss incident in the skies over Texas. Quick corrective actions by both parties prevented a potential disaster, but it served as a stark reminder of the need for clear and precise communication. Fatigue is another factor that can impair a pilot's judgment. Long hours and irregular schedules can lead to exhaustion, affecting a pilot's ability to make sound decisions. In 2015, a fatigued pilot made a critical error during a night flight, leading to a hard landing that caused substantial damage to the helicopter. Fortunately, there were no casualties, but the incident highlighted the need for adequate rest and proper scheduling. Training is essential to minimize pilot errors. Pilots undergo continuous education and practice to stay sharp and updated on the latest protocols and technologies. Simulators play a crucial role in this training, allowing pilots to experience and react to various emergency scenarios without real-world consequences. In the end, the human element in aviation is both a strength and a vulnerability. While technology and training can mitigate many risks, the responsibility ultimately lies with the pilot to make the right decisions under pressure. It's a reminder that despite all advancements, the human factor remains a critical component of aviation safety. What do you think about the role of pilot errors in aviation accidents? Share your thoughts in the comments and make sure to subscribe to Explained for more insights into the world of aviation and beyond.